Why do bunions and flat feet often appear together? Even though they're usually addressed as separate problems, research reveals a strong link between them with each potentially causing the other. In this video, we'll dive into the connection between these issues and present a four-step protocol for effectively dealing with them at the same time. Our feet have two primary structural bases of support that are triangular in shape. Triangles are frequently utilized in architecture for enhancing rigidity and reinforcing structures. And it's no surprise that they also play a critical role in supporting our bodies. The first triangle referred to as the tripod foot relies on proper toe alignment, while the second triangle depends on the foot arch. Consequently, bunions and flat feet both disrupt these structures, leading to dysfunctional feet. Interestingly, the design of our Barefoot Strength logo was also inspired by these two triangles. So as we move through this video, you'll gain the understanding of how these triangular structures work together to provide mutual support for the feet. Let's first examine how toe alignment can impact the stability of the foot arch. To illustrate this concept, we'll use the extended arm plank position as an analogy. With my hands placed wide apart and my feet together, my body resembles the tripod foot, with my right arm representing the big toe and my left arm representing the pinky toe, and my feet representing the heel. In this position, my entire body forms a robust arch similar to the foot arch. Now, as I move my right arm closer to my left, mimicking the misalignment of the big toe shifting towards the other toes, I lose stability in my core and collapse on my right side. This collapse mirrors how the foot arch deteriorates when the big toe moves out of alignment and adopts the bunion shape referred to as hallux valgus. Research has consistently identified a strong correlation between bunions and flat feet. In one study investigating the relationship between adolescent bunions and flat feet, Adolescent patients with bunions experienced an 8 to 24 times higher incidence of flat feet when compared to the general population. In another study on 32 women with a bunion angle exceeding 15 degrees, all the participants also had accompanying flat feet. Now that we've seen how toe misalignment can impact the foot arch, let's examine how flat feet can affect toe alignment. A weak flat foot, commonly referred to as a collapsed arch, is prone to overpronation during each step. This causes the forces of the body weight to direct laterally towards the inside of the feet rather than a natural forward direction over the toes, as in a stable foot. Consequently, the big toe joint is also forced to pronate and deviate into the hallux vulgar shape. As one might imagine, walking thousands of steps daily over several years in this manner can result in the development of a bunion deformity. The Journal of Foot and Ankle Surgery conducted a study that observed as the foot arch becomes less prominent, the bunion angles tend to increase. This confirms the positive correlation between flat feet and bunions. Now that we've identified the connection between bunions and flat feet, it's clear that fixing one can impact the other. Because of this interrelation, prioritizing a set order for fixing these issues can be challenging, almost like a chicken or the egg situation. Therefore, starting with the simplest solution can provide a strong base for resolving both problems. So let's go through a protocol that starts with the simplest fixes and gradually moves on to the more labor intensive activities. The first step in our four step protocol for promoting foot health is to change your footwear. Most conventional shoe designs have a pointed toe box that does not align with the natural shape of our feet. This can cause problems like bunions, which occur when the big toe is forced into an unnatural position. To prevent these issues, it's important to find shoe designs that match the natural shape of our feet. Barefoot shoes are a great option since they feature an anatomical toe box that allows for full toe splay and natural movement. In addition to improving toe alignment, wearing wide toe box shoes can also enhance foot arch height. A 2018 study published in the journal Scientific Reports compared the foot arches of 75 urban Americans who wore conventional shoes with those of 75 members of the Mexican Tahirumara tribe who predominantly wear non-restrictive sandals. The study found that 33% of the Americans had flat feet, while only 1 out of 75 Tahirumara participants presented with a collapsed arch. This suggests that footwear can also have a significant impact on foot arch development. I'll include links to all the barefoot shoes we've tested and recommend in the description below. 
Now, to complement the benefits of barefoot shoes, it's essential to combine them with silicone toe spaces. In fact, a 2017 study on silicone spaces and bunions found that wearing only wide shoes without spaces doesn't guarantee that the toes will spread out to fill the larger space. The study involved 90 participants who had more than 20 degrees of great toe misalignment and were provided with wide toe box shoes. The researchers divided the participants into two groups, with one group also receiving silicone toe spaces to wear with their shoes. After 12 months, the authors compared the two groups and found that the group wearing only wide shoes showed no improvement in their bunions, while the group using silicone toe spaces with the shoes experienced significant improvements. These findings highlight the importance of wearing silicone toe spaces to help restore the natural alignment of the big toe. The reality is that once the alignment is lost, the toes require manual assistance from the silicone toe spaces to relearn proper toe splay. Therefore, it's crucial to wear silicone toe spaces in addition to barefoot shoes. I'll provide links to the silicone spaces recommended to use with the shoes down in the description below. The third step in this protocol is to improve walking and running mechanics by correcting a toed out walking pattern, as this pattern of walking promotes increased pronation. Let's observe this in action. When the foot spins out, it typically strikes the ground on the outer part of the heel, and since the toes are pointed more sideways, forward momentum sends forces through the arch and big toe joint, causing bunion strain in this area. If you notice yourself walking with this toe out pattern and see excessive wear on the outer heel and inner toe area of your shoes, then this collapse is likely occurring. There are usually two factors that cause this altered gait style. The first is excessive ankle stiffness. So instead of the ankle flexing appropriately during each step, a restriction in the area results in a compensatory pattern where the foot spins out and the lost range of ankle motion is reclaimed through the collapsing arch. The second cause of the toed out walking style may be due to hip internal rotation restriction. For the feet to point straight while walking, the hips need to have sufficient internal rotation ability. An inability to internally rotate will force the foot to rotate outwards. Fortunately, there is an effective mobility exercise that can help improve both ankle mobility and hip internal rotation simultaneously. Here's how to perform it. Find a box or platform that's around knee height and stand directly behind it. Then rotate your entire body 20 to 30 degrees in relation to the box. With the foot furthest from the box, lift it up and over the front foot to stand on the box, while keeping the other foot rooted to the ground. Your upper body and front leg should be facing the box squarely, but the trailing leg remains rotated 20 to 30 degrees inwards. In this position, you should feel some tension through the hip, especially if the trailing leg is extended. This indicates that you are successfully challenging the hip in internal rotation. Next, push forward through the front leg to capture more ankle mobility. This will be apparent for both the back leg and the front leg. The key mistake to avoid is allowing the back leg to spin out or the heel of the foot to lift. If this occurs, you may have rotated your body and foot too far internally or are pushing beyond your mobility limits. It's best to start conservatively and gradually increase the range of motion as your body adapts. The final step on this plan is to work on intrinsic foot muscle strengthening. The abductor hallucis is the biggest of these intrinsic foot muscles and plays a crucial role in stabilizing the foot arch and helping to keep the big toe in proper alignment. However, when the big toe is out of alignment, the abductor hallucis muscle is pulled into mechanically disadvantaged position, causing it to lose strength. To strengthen this muscle, start by wearing silicone toe spaces as these devices help correct misalignment issues, allowing the abductor hallucis to work from a more mechanically advantageous position, allowing it to become more active during daily activities and regain strength over time. In addition to this, specific foot arch strengthening exercises can be incorporated into your training regimen to speed up the muscle's development. One such exercise is the supinated heel raises. Begin with your toes pointed straight and wearing silicone toe spray. Actively press your toes into the ground to start raising your heels while simultaneously trying to get them to face each other. Ensure that the toes, especially the big toe, remain pressed against the ground. As you can see, when I hold this position, it looks like the foot is wound tight. This tension through the foot creates stability. From there, lower the heels back down to the ground with control and repeat. Another helpful tip is to actively squeeze your glutes as you raise your heels. This helps engage the glutes in stabilizing the lower limbs. 
If you perform this exercise correctly, your toes will feel like they're spreading apart during each heel lift. You can do this exercise with support at first, but the goal is to stay balanced and in control on the way down and to become strong and powerful through the foot on the way up without assistance. So ascend quickly, pause at the top, and then descend slowly. To increase difficulty, you can slow down the tempo on the descending portion of the heel raise or perform them while holding weighted objects. This is just one of the many foot strengthening exercises we teach on our online Strong Feet Strong Foundation classes through our website. If you're serious about building a strong athletic foundation, be sure to check them out using the links below. One more thing to discuss is the use of arch supporting insoles. Let's use our friend John as an example. He has flat feet and a slight bunion and he's making progress with wide shoes, silicone spaces and foot strengthening exercises, but is taking time to see significant progress. Meanwhile, he enjoys playing soccer and hiking on weekends. In this case, John could add arch supporting insoles only during soccer games and hikes, as his feet may not be ready to handle those demands without some assistance. Eventually, with consistent foot strengthening and toe alignment work, he won't need the support at all. Until then, it's there to just help during high volume activities. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll definitely like this one too. See you there.